All right, so today we're going to tackle the subject of how to mix an acoustic guitar. And for this tutorial, I have purposefully chosen an acoustic guitar that was not recorded all that great. So we're going to take you from this... ...to this. This is a tricky subject for a couple reasons. Mainly, acoustic guitars can be difficult to record if you don't have a great studio setup and good mics and a good room. And secondly, acoustics are not necessarily easy to compress. So we're going to start with subtractive EQ to gain tonal balance on the acoustic. Then we're going to cover the classic way to compress an acoustic. And then I'm going to give you a few other methods that I think are way better that you may not know about. And then we'll talk about dynamic EQ and tape saturation. And then we'll get into the rest of the effects chain and show you how to help set it into a mix. So let's get right into it. All right, so this is the guitar we're working with, and you can hear that it's got quite a bit of issues. In an ideal situation, all it really needs is maybe some low mid cut to take away some of the boominess and boxiness, and a high pass filter, and maybe a little air on the top, and hopefully no compression at all, but that's usually not the situation that a home engineer is in. So before we get into tonal balance, let's uh, take a look around the spectrum analyzer here and see what we have to work with. All right, so most acoustics, around the low mid 250 hertz range is where you have the boxiness and boominess and we definitely have some here but we also have an unusual amount of low rumble here around 100 hertz that we definitely need to take care of and while you're in here listen to the really low end because if you had uh, footsteps down the hall or someone knocked a mic stand this is probably where it would show up so you want to listen around for things like that and likewise, way up here at the high end, if you have maybe a microphone cable that had some hiss coming through it because of shielding or an unshielded power supply was giving you hiss in your recording, this is be where you'd want to look. This spectrum analyzer is by Voxango and it's called Span and I have a whole tutorial on this plugin. It's free and it's awesome. And I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. This acoustic has a buildup around 1.1, 1.2K. Let me take the solo up here so you can hear it again. And right in here, there's a little bit of a mid-frequency buildup going on there. We're going to have to take care of that. And then, usually with an acoustic guitar, the high-end tinniness and brittleness that comes from the transient section is going to be around 5 to 7K. And this guitar definitely has plenty of problems there. Especially this stuff up around 7K is really atrocious. It's hard on the ears and all the way down to 5K. So this guitar is going to need a lot of subtractive EQ, a lot more than a beautiful recording would. So let's get right into that. All right, so here's what we've done to this guitar. You always want to start with a high pass. And the lowest fundamental on an acoustic is around 80 hertz, so I've rolled off everything below 80 hertz. Takes care of a lot of that stuff that you just don't need down on the bottom end, and that's also going to increase your headroom overall in your mix. And the low mids that we ended up taking out was at 233. We had to take all the way to 6.5 dB out at a wider Q than we would normally want to, because uh, normally you want to cut narrow, and when you boost, you boost wide. But this acoustic had so many issues that some of our cuts actually have fairly wide cues. And then the, the really low one was at 100 hertz, and I ended up taking out almost 11 dB, which is not ideal, but you got to do what you got to do. This guitar needed some real cleaning up. And then we also had 525 hertz. I took out six decibels there. And then the one we were talking about earlier at 1100, another six decibels out of that, a really good chunk. And then the high tinny brittle stuff around 7K, almost 7 dB. There's no boosting going on. We're just removing unwanted frequencies and things that have built up that are taking away from the balance. So I'm going to play you this guitar again without the EQ, the dry signal, and then we'll turn it on so you can hear the difference. Bring in the EQ. And dry signal again. And bring it back on. So at this point, it's time to start talking about compressing acoustic guitars. So the real issue with compressing an acoustic guitar is the fact that there's more energy in the low end of the spectrum. So the compressor reacts to that energy and makes it clamp down harder on the high mids. And it tends to compromise the sound of the acoustic fairly quickly. So let me show you what I mean. So the classic way to compress an acoustic guitar is with a very fast attack and a very fast release. And start with a ratio of about 4 to 1, and then you would clamp down with the threshold until you got 2, 3, maybe 4 dB of gain reduction. So let's go ahead and do that. So 
That's the classic way. Now I'm going to turn the compressor on and off so you can hear what it's doing to the original signal. Okay, there's the original. And compressor back on. So that's obvious that the compressor is working. It's not like it doesn't work. You're getting compression, you're having more dynamic control, and that's certainly going to sit better in a mix. And the quiet notes won't fade away in the mix, and the loud notes won't jump out as much. But you can also clearly hear that the highs and the high mids, the compressor is just simply overreacting because of the low end amplitude signal. So I want to show you a different and better way to compress an acoustic guitar that's more transparent and still gives you good gain reduction and helps it sit in a mix. So now what we're going to do is the slowest attack possible and the fastest release possible. This will give us a whole bunch of transparency and it won't clamp down on any of the transients at all. And then we'll turn the ratio off, which is the equivalent of a one-to-one -one ratio. And then we're going to bring the threshold up just until it completely stops reacting to the guitar. So we're not going to be using the threshold to do the compression. So let me show you. So we're going to adjust the threshold to we're not seeing any gain reduction and it's above the highest peaks. And now what we're going to do is actually get a little bit of gain reduction with just the ratio and not the threshold. So just by dialing in a modest ratio of maybe one and a half or two to one, much less. Now you can't see on the meter that there's hardly any gain reduction, but you can certainly hear it with your ears. So let's hear the original without the compressor and then we're going to turn the compressor on. Bringing it on. Turn it off. And back on. And so it's obvious that we have more dynamic control there with just a hint of transparent compression. That is with the slowest attack and the fastest release, and then you actually gain the compression with just the ratio, very modestly, and no threshold at all. So that is not the standard way of doing it, but I highly recommend it. You should totally give that a try. And before we move on, there's one other really important method of compressing an acoustic that I want to show you. So if you have access to a compressor that has a high pass, then you can kind of essentially solve the compression problem by not allowing the low frequencies to trigger the compressor. So this is another great free plugin from Tokyo Don called Kotelnikov. This has a high pass. Right now what I've done is I've set the compressor high pass at about 250 hertz at about a 12 dB per octave slope. So those low frequencies aren't actually hitting the compressor. And so if you do it this way, then you can actually dip your threshold in a little further with a little bit higher ratio and clamp down and get a little bit more compression in the mids and high ranges without the compressor overreacting and making it sound bad. So this is a fantastic solution, still using super slow attack and super fast release. So I'm gonna go ahead and dial in a good healthy 2 dB of gain reduction. So it'll still be a very light compression, but it might make all the difference of making this sit into a mix while still maintaining the natural sound that you want from your acoustic. So let me show you. So now we're going to engage the threshold. All right, so we're getting about 2 dB of gain reduction at the peaks, and I have the ratio set at 2.5. So I'm going to apply the makeup gain to about 2 dB. And here, this is the delta button, which basically gives you a chance to hear only what's being compressed. So listen to that. Now I'm gonna bypass the compressor on and off so you can see. I'm actually gonna dial in a little more compression. Back the ratio off. So we're getting a good amount of compression there that's really helping out with the mids and the highs, but it's not squashing them in a really obvious way that's ruining the integrity of the recording. This is way more natural sounding since we've added the high pass into the compressor. We're essentially leaving the lows uncompressed. And the last compression method I want to show you is parallel compression. 
If your compressor has a dry or mixed knob, you can over compress the signal a little bit and then blend the dry and wet signals together so you don't necessarily hear the over compression and you get a nice blend of the original signal with the compression. This is a fantastic compression technique that works for a lot of instruments and vocals, but it also is really helpful on an acoustic guitar. So let me show you. So in this case, what we're going to do is actually bring down the threshold a little bit and raise the ratio a little more, but we're going to leave the attack and release the same. And we are going to start to hear it over compress a little bit, but then we're going to use the parallel compression, the dry or the mix knob to bring it in around 50%. And basically what you're going to have is a layered parallel signal. That is often a really great way to compress acoustics. So let's dial that in. threshold down till we start to get a little gain reduction here, 3, 4 dB, and now we're going to clamp down with the ratio, and I'm going to dial some makeup gain so we can hear this, and then this mix knob over here is set at 100%, that means 100% wet or all compressed, I'm going to dial it back to the dry signal, and then we're going to start blending. So now we'll turn that compressor on and off so you can hear it. That's a dry signal. And bring back parallel compression. And so you can hear how the parallel compression is still relatively transparent, but it's got more dynamic control. Yeah, so definitely give that method a try. Having a parallel compressor is a great way to be able to get that extra punch and clamp down with the compressor, but blend back in the original signal so it's still nice and smooth and transparent. So those are two great compression options for you for an acoustic. So whether you have a high pass on your compressor or not, you still might come out of this in the context of the mix, wishing that you had a little bit more dynamic control to just the low end. And that brings me to the next plugin I want to show you. All right, so this is TDR Nova, and it is a dynamic EQ, which basically means it's like a combination of an EQ and a compressor. So you can compress specific EQ bands, similar to a multi-band compressor, but in my opinion, quite a bit more useful in a lot of circumstances. And I'm about to do a whole tutorial on Nova. This is another free plugin that's absolutely fantastic. So this is what we're going to use to bring our low end back that we had to hollow out at the very beginning because we had to make that really big dip at 100 hertz. Well, we'll do that here with a low end shelf, but we'll compress it so it's under control. And if you end up using a high pass on a compressor and leave your low end signal uncompressed, you would do this next in the effects chain and regain control of the low end and get it where you want it. And we also did some further adjustments here with Nova that we didn't do with the static EQ because we're going to do it with a compressed EQ to make it smoother and gain a lot more control. Control. And this is the point where we bring the pleasantry back in and use a dynamic EQ to fit your acoustic into your mix and notch it around the other instruments and take a hole out of it a little bit to make room for vocals and so on. And whether it's an acoustic or anything else, you always want to be mixing in the context of the mix and not in solo, which is what we've been doing for the tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and play the guitar again with the EQ and compression that we've already done, and then I'll bring in the dynamic EQ so you can hear the difference. So we've also used a little bit of parallel compression here with Nova. I'm running at about 20% dry mix. So a little bit of the dry signal is cutting through that just has the subtractive EQ and the compression on it. And about 80% of what Nova is doing is showing. Now with Nova, you can go in and solo each of the bands. So for example, let's take a listen to what the low end is compressing. So there we have about a six dB boost and we're bringing that low end back and we have the threshold set down pretty good so it's compressing it. So we're not just static EQing the low end with the shelf, we're compressing that low end so the peaks jump out, they trigger the threshold, and they bring it back down. Now let's take a look at our mid dip. 
So here we're compressing back at that 1.1K range and getting a little more control over that area. And you can see as the gold line dances down, that's the threshold. So only the louder parts of that frequency spectrum are triggering the threshold. And that's giving us more dynamic and tonal control over this acoustic. And then that real brittle, tinny problem area on the high end, we've actually cramped down on that area quite a bit more here. I've taken an additional 2 dB out with a really aggressive threshold with a really fast attack and slow release. So when those transients cut through that are kind of ear piercing and unpleasant, it really cramps down on that. And I've actually put an extra 10 decibels on the high end and brought the threshold down so it compresses the peaks a little bit. And with the algorithm on Nova, you can actually do what appear to be to the eyes, very dramatic cuts and boosts, but the way Nova does it is it's super gentle and transparent. So again, let's listen to the whole thing. And bypassed. Back on. Every engineer really needs a good dynamic EQ. This one is so versatile, it's so fantastic. This has really helped us do the finishing touches on the tonal balance and the dynamic control. But at this point, you would be doing it in the context of the mix so you can dial in just what you need and pull back just what you don't need, but in a really controlled and gentle way. So I can't recommend Nova enough and stay tuned for that tutorial on this. All right, so now let's take a look at the rest of the effects chain. And as I've said, everything that you're doing from this point on is going to need to be done in the context of the mix. So you should be listening to the entire mix before you're deciding where else to boost and where else to cut. And if this is a really dense mix with a lot of instruments, you may use some different techniques than if this was a standalone guitar with not much else going on. But let's dive right in and show you what else we've done here. So who says you can't put a de -er on an acoustic guitar? You most certainly can, especially a recording like this. In this case, I've dialed the high pass frequency up to 7,000s because I'm looking just in between seven and eight where I have some issues. And then the transient shaper comes after that. And the point with this is you can dial it forward or back if you need the guitar to appear more front or more in the back. So if you have a dense mix and the acoustic sitting in there, but you just need some of the high end to pop out, this can actually work better than turning up the high end on the EQ. Sometimes you'll need both. Then we get to the tape saturation. And this is one of the most important parts. It's a really classic technique to use saturation on an acoustic guitar, but to use it very gently and subtly. And tape just seems to work really well for an acoustic. The tape saturation will, just by its nature, help compress the transients and shave off a little of the high-end stuff, but it really lends itself to the overall character of the acoustic. And the important thing about saturation in general is you're actually adding harmonic content into the recording. So if you boost something with an EQ, it's essentially turning up the volume for that area, that frequency spectrum, but that's not true with saturation. Saturation is actually adding harmonic overtone content to the original signal. And that's super important, especially with a thin acoustic like this. So I'm only doing 25% saturation here and I'm not oversampling. I don't think this needs it, but in some cases it definitely does. And I'm not adding any extra compression here, but this little bit goes a long ways. So after the saturator, we get to some mid-side EQ settings. And at this point, this would depend on your mix, of course. So let's say in this case, I found a little hole around 1.7, 1.8K, where there could be some room for some mid frequencies to peek through. And the same thing at about 4.1. And remember at the beginning, we talked about narrow cuts and then later broader boosts. Well, that's what we've done here. These boosts are actually fairly wide and they're only boosting the side channel. And then directly beneath them at the same frequency is a bit of a narrow mid frequency cut. And that's a really classic technique for mid-side EQ is you're going to add a little bit on the side, but at the same exact spot, you also take out a little bit of the mid because when you add the side, just by the nature of the EQ, it's going to pile up a little extra information in there in the mid. So, And then on the high end here, I'm adding just on the side frequencies, some high end air on the shelf, just below 11K to help make the top shine through the mix. And I've also done one more very dramatic cut at the problem area, and that's in the whole spectrum, mid and side. And that's at the 7.5, 8K range. I've done another 13 dB taken out of there. When you have to do cuts like this so much, it's really helpful to boost on either side of that cut. So I hope you find that really helpful. These are really useful techniques. The last thing on this effects chain is slick EQ. 
Now, Slick EQ is also by Tokyo Dawn. This EQ will allow you to do more saturation. So you can turn the saturation on and off on this thing. So with this, I'm doing super subtle adjustments. I'm just bringing a little low and high back. I'm adding a little more air on the high end at 12K, but I'm saturating it. And that's just 2 dB with a high shelf. And then I'm doing a low shelf to bring back a nice stable boost to the frequencies without over accenting all the stuff that we've already taken out that we didn't need. So this is a great plugin. These are just all tools in your tool belt that you can use as needed, but it's really important to know how to take a subpar recording and just make the most of it. So that's the entire effects chain, and now we're going to go back to the original recording that we started with, the dry signal, take a listen, and then we're going to compare it to our entire effects chain turned on. Here we go. here it's really night and day difference it's almost like two entirely different guitars so you know you're never going to be able to take a poor recording and turn it into a masterpiece but a lot of times we're dealing with recordings that just aren't all that hot and we need a bunch of tools to make the most of it so i really hope you got a lot out of this and thanks for checking it out and let me know what you think in the comments and i'll catch you on the next one